then you have to be another kind of listener during the editing process. Is that, does that ring true at all? Or? It absolutely does ring true because you do a long interview. Um, probably the longest interview that I've ever done is the recent series of interviews that I did with Donald Rumsfeld for my film forthcoming in the fall. Uh, that was over 30 hours over 11 days. Um, McNamara was much less, somewhere around 20 hours, although on a number of occasions I've tried to do an interview in one day that goes on 9, 10, 11 hours. Um, I did a film about Rick Rosner. I had profiled two members of the Mega Society, people with ultra high IQs. Um, Mensa is one in 30, the Mega Society is one in a million. <laughs> IQ is so hard that they really can't effectively be measured. They have to devise their own self-serving <laughs> ideas <laughs> in order to put them back on some kind of scale. Um, uh, one of the, uh, I don't know, IQ of somewhere around 200 uh, I interviewed him for about 11 hours, and uh, didn't sound as smart at the end as he did at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he really ever sounded all that smart. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy, yes, but by the end of the interview, I believe we were both hallucinating, <laughs> which to me seemed like a good thing. <laughs> But back to the to the listening. When when you're when you're listening, when you're when you're assess when you're re when you're rehearing those interviews with Matt and Mara, and it's clear that you just have to let them go. I mean, is it does it just does it tell you at that point? What does surprise me talk? is that you'll do an interview, I'll do an interview, and then I'll put it up on the editing machine and I'll start to listen to it. And Invariably, I will hear things that I never, never remember hearing. There is stuff in the interview that I just had no idea was there. When he spoke about the, the, his experience with LeMay and firebombing Tokyo, did you when you're sitting there behind the camera, the Interatron, which I'd like to talk about too, but are you thinking, holy, I mean, did you know what a scoop you had at that moment, or were you just so kind of locked into the, to the conversation? Was that an instance of going back and realizing, wow, that's huge? Uh, I think it is an instance of going back and realizing what I just heard. I was so worried that McNamara was not even going to show up for the interview. When he did show up, he told me he would give me 10 or 15 minutes at most. <laughs> <laughs> he ended up staying for over two hours, and then he came back the next day. Um, and we had started talking just before he sat down. Uh, maybe this was fortuitous, obviously it was fortuitous. I'll take back the maybe. Uh, that weekend, the New York Times Magazine had published an article about Bob Carey, um, who had been a senator uh, and was president of the New School, winner of the Congressional Medal of Honor and uh, had been accused of war crimes quite recently. And we started talking about the Bob Carey article. Uh, 
both of us had seen it. And McNamara said to me that Bob Carey was not a war criminal. If anyone was a war criminal, it was him. And then I got him in the chair. <laughs> um, it's not something you hear every 